the African View with Buki Shonoga. This week, TAV is in New York City attending a series of meetings on the United, Nation, uh, the United Nations on the Commission on the Status of Women, which started on February 22nd and lasts through March 4th. This year's CSW theme focused on increasing access and partic participation of women and girls in education, in training, science, and technology in Africa. Joining me to elaborate on this initiative called Global Innovation Through Science and Technology, U.S. Assistant Secretary Dr. Kerry Ann, welcome to the African View. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Now, this when was this initiative first launched? Um, well, it's a lot of initiatives are happening here this week. Okay. Uh, the Commission on the Status of Women at the UN has been in existence for several years. And we're very happy to be a member of it, as are 11 members from African states. And as you mentioned, this year's meeting is about access to science, education, uh, careers, and training. And there are several activities that we've been discussing um, that the US supports in this effort, including the one you mentioned, the global uh, innovation, global innovation through science and technology. That's an effort that we are just kicking off that really tries to get science out there into the productive sector. So discoveries in the laboratory can end up being products for citizens. So that's one activity. We also have activities where we are looking at trying to help train African uh, women who are agricultural scientists to pick up skills in leadership and communication, to add to their scientific skills. And there are many other programs that we're trying to highlight this week that really show the importance of women being women and girls being full participants in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, because it's so important for a country's leadership and development. Now, which countries in Africa, if you may, are, uh, are you focused on? Well, um, it's an interesting question. The, the, mem the African nations that are members of the commission are the Central African Republic, Comoros, Eritrea, Gabon, Gambia, Guinea, Namibia, Niger, Rwanda, Senegal, Senegal, and Swaziland. Now those are members of the commission. Okay. Um, the U.S. government has programs in many countries throughout Africa, and the one I mentioned about agricultural scientists so far has supported 180 fellows from different countries across Africa. We then, of course, have USAID missions in many countries. Mm -hmm. Also, Peace Corps has many activities across Africa. And in both of those programs, there's a big emphasis on education, a big emphasis on the fact that access to education and participation be both about boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And then there are some special programs that really try to bring the nature of science, you know, the research, working at a laboratory, um, to the boys and girls. In, in Ghana, there's a mobile laboratory program that goes around states and schools at different times. Um, there's another effort that uh, Secretary Clinton announced a while ago called M Women, okay. which is an which recognizes the fact that sometimes there's a gender gap in terms of who's using the new technology, and so this is about mobile women, women using mobile technology, and it's a public-private partnership to try to address this gap, um, to make sure that more women have access and understanding about using this technology that can be useful in many ways. It can be an education tool, it can help in terms of health, it can help in terms of understanding and communicating with businesses if you're trying to start a small business. So we're trying to work on that gap. So it's everything from education of girls to narrowing the technology gap. Thank you. Now how are these countries selected? How are the countries selected? Well, it depends on the programs. Okay. Um, the program I mentioned about the uh, women in agricultural science, mm -hmm. that's a program that's supported by USAID and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I see. Uh, and GSMA, I think it is. Um, and I think that is just a program that is working with, with across Africa. I don't know how they're selecting countries per se. I think it depends on where they're getting some traction. Um, where USAID has a mission and they have counterparts who really want to work with them. So I'm not quite sure on that one. On okay. the agricultural one, I think it's a competitive process. So women apply and they're selected. Now, again, there is, there's been a, an increase in declining quality of education across you know, Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. 
I was just thinking, I mean, I've been talking to people about this, and then from the sessions that I've attended, they also reiterated the same point. That considering that there is some problems already, uh, because public schools in most parts of Africa, elementary school, I should say, mm -hmm. and maybe some uh, secondary school, what they call high school here, uh, usually sponsored by, the, uh, funded by the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that the government, African governments in different countries are not locating enough resources mm -hmm. to fund public and primary, I mean, primary mm -hmm. school education, secondary school education. So how do you think science, technology, and training would sort of boost <laughs> the quality of education if they don't have the basic, right. you know, standard education that they need in the first place to even begin to understand science and technology? Well, I, I think what you're highlighting is that um, to maintain quality education with access to everyone, it's a question of, of infrastructure, of technology, and of policy. Okay. And so all of those pieces have to play together. Okay. And so I think that um, you know the citizens of African countries recognize this, and they are beginning to look to officials, I think, to provide some of this. So it's about who's chosen to be running countries or running school boards or whatever the level of um, political leadership is. So there's that piece, and then there's the piece about you know quality information and materials. And I think that's where the U.S. Uh, through USAID and through other activities um, tries to sort of work together to have good quality information and then you bring in the technology which, which lets you expand the message or make sure everyone has a chance to hear these courses so I, I think it's I think it's the whole picture um, and you know it's it's hard it's a it's a complicated issue but I think that we're seeing a lot of progress and it's just something we all have to stick stick to but you know, today or, or this week, we're really trying to focus on, so where do women fit in this? From, from girls' education up to women as scientific and political leaders. Right. Have the communities tell us what they need. Because right. we can begin to write the software to address that. Right. So it's now the technology is getting sophisticated enough. So we, we need to know what problem do we want the technology to help with. Um, is it getting out a lesson plan to a, to a community of teachers who may not be able to have access to it? Is it sharing data? We also had a scientist in the audience talk about, well, now you can, on a cell phone, begin to collect data about the environment. And students can share that. They can measure things in different sites and say, well, here's what I measured. Um, so there's all kinds of uses. And I think that that's where we're at this exciting point where we're exploring that. As you know, gender role is mm -hmm. a problem in, in, in the last parts of the world, not just in Africa. Oh, I mean, that's really. absolutely true. So <laughs> when, you, when you have cases where I, I have a 10-year-old, oh. and I remember telling him one time that education is not your right, it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. And there was a case actually in Afghanistan where this little boy who is seven years old, they were trying to get him to go to school. Mm -hmm. And his parents said he had to work in the factory yes. to help the children to help the family, right. so I t tell my son all the time that this is not your right, it's actually mm -hmm. a privilege. So in Africa, where there's a, a serious issue with gender role and right. uh, gender equality, and uh, you know, the percentage of percentage of women in governance is not really, that, I mean, it's, it's not impressive at all. Mm -hmm. So how do you envision collaborating, or maybe the government cooperating with, with CSW, mm -hmm. or GIST on, that, on the, this initiative, to really be able to implement, you know, what, what, what the program has in mind, or the initiative itself. Well, I think that um, there's a lot of other questions in your big question. Right. <laughs> I think that the idea that uh, girls shouldn't be educated the way boys are educated is one hurdle, and mm. that can be cultural, um, and I think that's something that we just all have to work on. Um, I think that there's an issue of education being available, good education being available to both boys and girls and letting them get into it rather than get into working. And, and economically, uh, you know, if a woman is, if a girl is educated, a whole family is educated. And so it's just, I think, beginning to get that message out, have cases where girls go to school and it's safe for them. and they're able to then contribute to their family later on, you know, as they grow up and as they have their own families. I, I think it just takes time and it takes a matter of outreach and cultures talking to each other. And I don't necessarily mean cultures across countries. I mean cultures within a country 
you know, that sometimes in a rural area, it's more difficult for girls to go to school because of the, the workload issue. Um, and so understanding that, well, if a, if a girl learns how to count and how to recognize certain things, she's probably going to be a better farmer. You know, so it's, it's, it's that. I think it'll take time. I think, you know, this UN Women Organization, mm -hmm. the Commission on the Status of Women, the efforts that many countries are making are trying to get at this because it's an, on, it's an ongoing challenge. And certainly in the U.S., while it's different, we certainly have our issues with girls getting into science and technology and enough women being in leadership roles in science and technology. So I think all countries are sharing this problem from different perspectives. And I think we can we can learn a lot from each other. Why do you, how does the U.S. government under this initiative plans to really make uh, a meaningful change or implement this effectively when you have to, for the most part, America has to go through African government or government in foreign countries to really implement a particular program? Well, there's a couple, a couple of things related to your question. Um, you know, we're here today because of the Commission on the Status of Women. It's a UN activity and to celebrate the launching of UN Women. So the U.S. very much supports these UN activities that put women at the forefront, that recognize all the challenges. And now, sort of moving to the other question you have, which is more a question of how do we interact with countries that are in the process of changing their governments or have different policies. You know, we are very much supportive of the reforms we're seeing around the world, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa. We are very saddened by the violence, mm -hmm. and we regret that, and we would call people to sort of do this non-violently and to sort of take care of their citizens and keep them out of harm's way. And we think that everyone should ha be able to have the right to assemble and to speak freely about what kind of government they want. So I think when it comes to then turning to Africa, I think we, you know, we s look for free and fair elections in the African countries that are coming up for elections now. Um, there are some African countries that are making a real point of saying we need women in government. At the last meeting, we just had a representative from Rwanda talked about the percentage of women in, in government is huge. It's close to 50%, he was saying. Um, so there are different models all over the place. Um, I think the U.S. believes in as I said, free and fair elections mm -hmm. and full participation of citizens. And we try to promote these ideals. We, you know, we can't make them happen. That's up to the citizens of the country and the leaders they elect. Um, but we want to work closely on sharing these values. And one of the ways that you can see this happening is that Secretary Clinton and many of us, when we engage with governments, I should say engage with countries, right. we don't only engage with governments. The secretary last week kicked off at the State Department a strategic dialogue with civil society. So every place she goes, uh, Secretary Clinton talks to government leaders, her counterparts, but she also talks to civil society because she recognizes that as a part of all of our relationships and as a part of the fabric of every country's society. Um, and so this is something that's recognizes what's going on, but also recognizes that, you know, what happens is far beyond government. It also includes the civil society. So I think on the fronts of science and technology, we're trying to work through UN, and we're trying to work with our bilateral partnerships through science organizations around the world. And on your other question, we're engaged on many levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, we recognize lots of changes, and we're happy to see them, but we really would like them to be nonviolent so that people don't lose their lives. Finally, what is the time frame uh, with this project? In other words, from the time it's implemented to to the point where you can actually measure maybe some level of success? Well, it depends. Uh, we've been talking about a couple of different projects. Um, the GIST project, the Global Innovation Through Science and Technology project, that's just getting started. Okay. So it'll be a few years. and. You know, all of our projects have lots of accountability built into them. So mm -hmm. what is the money being spent on, what's been accomplished, so it'll, in a couple of years we'll have to look at the project and see where it is. In terms of the project I mentioned about uh, African women in agricultural science, that's a project that's shared with um, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and USAID, 
as well as the consultative group on international agricultural research and they have measures and they look at what's happening and who they're training and then what are these women going on to do so all of our projects have measurement and indicators and accountability built into them thank you Dr. Kerry Ann is assistant, U.S. Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs. Thank you so much, Dr. Quite welcome. It's my pleasure.